Good morning. Welcome to Grace for Today. Blessings to each of you. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Welcome to another day as we continue to look at uh, the distinction. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about today. The distinction. It's our new series and we are grateful. And um, I pray that the Lord is blessing you and that you're getting something from this. Um, it's blessing me as I'm looking into it, let me just say. And it's reminding me of the favor of God and the hand of God who moves for us and through us and how he ordains our steps. He is the faithful God. God bless you all. Good morning, everybody. Um, since I didn't get a notification, I'm going to use your notifications that I see. So God bless everybody. Welcome. God bless you. Hey, everybody. Let's get started. And uh, I want to just start with um, we our topic, our subtopic, of course, is the Levites produce a deliverer. I want to just talk about the Levites for just a few seconds and... Um, just letting you know a little bit about the significance of that first verse. This first verse says this in chapter two. I'm trying to do a chapter per um, per live so I can stay on point. Let's see. Here we are. So God bless you. Hey, y'all. Look at the Ingrams. So at the first verse says this. There was and there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. Now, I want to say this about the Levites. Good morning. Hey, everybody. The Levites, it's significant. It's important to note that the Levites were, of course, the priests in the house of God, but they were also the defenders of all things holy. They were the defenders of all things holy. I know when we think of uh, the Levites, we probably think of Eli and, uh, but Eli wasn't always the way he was. He, he didn't, he didn't just get there. Eli was a mighty man of God. He was a mighty man of God, but you also consider the Levites from, um, Exodus chapter 32, verse 26. Let's talk about that for just a second. These were the Levites when Moses was up there on the mountain, I'm going to talk about this real quick that I'm going to get to our text because I've got a lot to cover in um, 12 minutes. So <laughs> these Levites, when Moses was up there on the mountain getting the commandments from the Lord and God said, you better get down there because them people you done brought from Egypt, they down there cutting the food. That's what the, well, he said quite like that, but that's what kind of what he said. You better get down there. Them folk you done brought from Egypt, they down there acting a fool. You better go down there and see about it. All right, so he goes down there and the, Moses stands and says, everybody who is for the Lord, get over here with me. The people who ran to Moses were the Levites. You hear me? It was the Levites. The Levites here, Exodus 32, 26. So he, Moses, stood at the entrance to the camp and said, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. The Levites were a force to be reckoned with. Hey, Kasten. Uh, good morning. Um, sorry, Jay. And of course, to Lucas, to all our little people. We must remember this. Though the Levites served in the house of God, they were the worshipers. They were the caretakers. They were a force to be, I know I'm yelling already. They were a force to be reckoned with. The Levites were not to be considered people who were mild-mannered and that's all. Because these Levites in Exodus 32 went throughout the camp and killed 32,000, I think 32,000 or 3,200 of their brethren. Because they were, they were worshiping an idol. Let's be clear. The Levites were a force to be reckoned with. They were the keepers of all things holy. So let's not just count them off as folk who were sitting in the temple, swinging the, the, uh, the oil, the oil and, uh, the, 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 the smoke so that they could come in and worship. They knew how to fight. 
What's that song? This is how I fight my battles. I might fight on my knees, but I'm going to tell you something. There's something happens when the Levites fight. So here you have a man who's of the house of Levi, who marries a woman who's a daughter of Levi, and they have a son. You know something is about to happen. So let me get going. She conceived and bare a son. She saw he was a goodly child. God produced a deliverer. Y'all know his name. His name is Moses. She hid him three months. Y'all know the story, so I'm going to try to speed along here. It says that y'all know she put him in the river, or the sister did, and they, his sister stood there to see what would be done. How was God going to save this child's life? How was God going to move things around? How was God going to orchestrate things? I got nine minutes here. So the, queen, the king's daughter was there at that time. God orders our steps. Don't you ever give up or think that God doesn't see and know. God sees, God knows, God is aware. He sees you. He sees you. He sees you. He knows where you are. He understands your plight and your de dilemma. And he has a plan. That baby it, that she made, this, it floated on the water. And Pharaoh sees this child. She loves him. She knows it's a Hebrew baby. But she loves him. The sister, Miriam, says, shall I go and call a, one of the Hebrew women to nurse this baby? Pharaoh's daughter says, yes, go do that. Let me move on. Y'all know the story. I'm going to go on. Moses grows up. Moses in verse 11, chapter 2 is where we are. It came to pass. Moses was grown. He went out. Moses' name means, y'all have heard it, drawn out. But it also means those who are saved. He was rescued. He was saved. Y'all know he killed an Egyptian because his values were correct. He was one who was a defender of what was right. Let's be clear. Then he goes, and of course, uh, then the he, then his brethren, the Hebrews, uh, he goes out the next day or whenever, and everybody knew he had killed a Hebrew, killed an Egyptian, and they, of course, instead of them being grateful of being protected, they said, "Oh, you gonna kill us too?" All right, so he gets afraid and he leaves. He goes over to Midian, and he helps these girls. Uh, protects them and here you have I want to get to this because my time is quickly going away and I have a point to get to verse 19 says uh, and their dad said how do you get home so early understand this and they said an Egyptian which meant he looked like an Egyptian though he was a Hebrew an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. His values were correct. There was something inside of him, though he grew up as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He was educated. He knew what to do. God let him grow up to learn the things he needed so that he could get what he needed to deliver the people of God. Not so he could be content in the, I love you too, Felicia, so that he could stay where he was, but so that he could deliver the people of God. Let's read on. Verse 21. Y'all know, and, and, and here you have uh, the priest of Midian saying, hey, go get him, bring him home. Don't let him stay out there. They brought him home. Verse 21 says something significant. God bless you, Elder Dixon. He says, Moses was content to dwell with the man. And this is Jethro, to dwell with the man. Moses was content. He was glad to be where he was. Let's see. And he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter, to marry. He married Zipporah. Moses, that's significant. He was content. He was happy. He was glad to be where he was. Verse 22. And she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom, 
For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. What is Moses talking about? Midian? Egypt? Both places he felt out of order that he didn't fit. Moses had an identity crisis. He was known as a son of Pharaoh, but he really didn't fit there. He was here and he felt content, but was that where he was supposed to be? He was a son of Pharaoh, but yet he knew he had to be a Hebrew because the scripture says that the Egyptian was, uh, was beating up, so to speak, on his brother who was a Hebrew. Verse 23, and it came to pass in the process of time, which meant Moses had to be over there in Midian for a long time. He had to be in Midian for a long time. It says, it came to pass that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed. Here's some points you need to hear. My time is almost gone by reason of the bondage. So Moses is where? Over there in Midian content but the children of Israel are still in Egypt in bondage they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage where are the children of Israel still over there in Goshen the place that Elder Ingram made that and I shared it on grace for today a place that should have been a place of safety for them security but when Joseph died, there arose a king who didn't know anything about. Right. Moses, knew, he didn't understand who he was. But God has a way of identifying us and helping us to know our purpose and where we fit. Hey, Mother Fleming. Here, they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. They were still in bondage. Moses was over there in Midian, content. Look at verse 24 and 25. This is the end of chapter two. Y'all stay with me for these three more minutes and we're going to get this done. Hear this. And God heard their groaning. And this is what God did. He heard their groaning. He remembered his covenant with Abraham with Isaac, glory to God, and with Jacob. And with who? Jacob. All right, all right, calm down. And God looked, so God heard, he remembered, and God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Because they cried. Where was Moses, the one who was the deliverer? The one who was drawn out of the water? Who was saved, rescued, so that he could deliver them? The one who was uh, the child of two Levites? The defender of all things holy? Over there in Midian? Content. But chapter 3 says, God is about to go over there and visit Moses. God ain't through. Sometimes we content where we are, but God ain't through. He knows how to get our attention. My time is gone. Chapter three, tomorrow. And we're going to talk about God is about to, to visit Moses. Because God designed him for purpose, the distinction. And God's going to use him because he is the product of two Levites, those who defend all things holy. You are a defender of all things holy. Let's pick that up tomorrow. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in us and you're showing us we have purpose. We need to know where we fit what you've called us to, what your hand is upon us for. We thank you for what you've begun in us.
Thank you that you show us, that you locate us, hallelujah, that we may be content where we are. But Lord, if it's not where you placed us, show us and direct us, orchestrate our lives. And we thank you now that you show yourself mighty for us. Lord, we thank you that you just help us to trust your hand and that you guide us to where you desire us to be. And we thank you now that you protect us, protect our children, protect our loved ones, our spouses, our significant others. Be our healer. Give us speedy recovery, peace in our minds. Let our cup of joy run over. We thank you for it even now. We receive it done in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. All right, everybody, I got to go. Y'all got to go. Hey, don't forget to share the video, type in, catch the replay, hashtag grace for today. Tomorrow, chapter three. And I'm hoping I can do the whole chapter, at least hit what I need to, because I need to get to chapter at least seven, eight, nine. I got to get there. I got to get there because that's where you start seeing what God does to make the children of Israel distinctive. The distinction becomes clear. Oh, bless God. Hallelujah. Hold on. We're going somewhere. All right. Share the video. Type in catch the replay. Hashtag graced for today. I'll upload this to YouTube in just a little bit. Y'all stay with me. We're going somewhere. All right. Bless God. Y'all. All right. See y'all in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never wasted in you. Have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.